Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk a little bit more about Colleen Ballinger. Now, if you're not familiar with what her story is, she's a famous YouTuber, comedian, singer, all of those things, and she developed a huge fan base, but she's now being accused of behaving inappropriately with fans. A lot of people have called this grooming behavior because a lot of what she's doing is kind of creepy. She's alleged to have sent lingerie to a child, which I don't think she denies, uh, to have asked a child for pictures of his butt, to have um, sent pornography to a child. And it wasn't pictures of her. It was pictures of a close friend of hers who trusted her, who she betrayed by sending those pictures to a child to mock them. So quite reasonably, a lot of people have called this grooming behavior. Now, Colleen Ballinger responded to this with sort of an apology video, except there was no apology in it. There was ukulele, but no apology. And it's really more of a video that blames everyone else. Well, now Vanity Fair has come out with an article with their opinion. And it's a bad opinion. It's really, really awful. And I'm going to talk about why. So this one is Vanity Fair, How the Miranda Sings slash Colleen Ballinger Scandal Went Off the Rails. And I'm just going to say, I disagree entirely with the whole went off the rails notion that they have here. So there are a few sort of critical points that they want to respond here or want to make. They say, however inappropriate her alleged behavior was, the article clarified that no sexual crime had been committed and that no evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger had intended to start a sexual relationship with a child. Ballinger did not respond to Rolling Stone's multiple requests for comment. And they have other sort of key elements here. They deny that this was grooming behavior. They say, oh no, it's not grooming. Uh, and we'll talk about that. And they also really kind of blame one of the victims here, Adam McIntyre, and say that, hey, um, he they suggest that he's doing it for the drama and, you know, for clicks, which, hmm. So um, let's talk about this. They say, listen, it's not grooming behavior. It's just this kind of joking, friendly, inappropriate setting that she created. Well, and that she hasn't actually, you know, offended against any children. Well, there is actually the possibility that some of her actions might be criminal. Um, sending pornography to children is banned in a lot of places. I'd have to track down sort of jurisdiction issues and so forth, but that's sort of a there is smoke here kind of thing. Uh, there's also an allegation that she was putting cheese puffs down her pants and inviting children to go in after them to retrieve them um, on stage. So that may also be grounds for charges. Uh, plenty of other behavior is sort of creepy and weird, but not necessarily criminal. But here is the thing. They come out and they're really strong in their defense of saying that it's not grooming. And they say, this is a paragraph that should just be shocking to people. They say the substance of Ballinger's alleged grooming has not gone beyond what McIntyre has described in his videos or what a few other fans allege thereafter. Um, that's a weird defense. It has not been interrogated by media outlets reporting on the controversy either. HuffPost published allegations of grooming flexibly employ the term in a fashion not unlike how it's weaponized in far-right circles against LGBTQ people. The described behavior does not approach the sexual exploitation or abuse that the actual definition of grooming indicates. Okay, so let's talk about grooming because I do criminal defense. So you get to see, and I say get to as in more have to, what these things look like. You learn a little bit about what this looks like in when people actually practice it. And the thing is that grooming behavior, when you're talking about abusive behavior, doesn't look abusive if you're not being careful or if you're not looking at it carefully. It's often phrased as this sort of jokey kind of thing because the people doing it know that they're at risk. 
when you're talking about actual offenders, they know that they're at risk in this process. And so they want to maintain deniability all the way up until something undeniable happens. Now, I don't know if that's where Ballinger was going with any of this. Like, we don't know what the future would have held had things been different. But this does seem to be a situation where we're saying, okay, um, you know, maybe she hasn't abused anybody, but it certainly looks like the pattern here is one that is familiar, one that is seen before. Vanity Fair's throwing in of LGBTQ people in this is frankly reprehensible. It has no connection to this because we're talking about somebody sending pornography and lingerie to a child. That's not nothing, right? That's not nothing at all. And this article really seems to blame McIntyre in a bunch of places. They say, oh, he asked for the lingerie. Well, no kidding. That's what happens when you take a child and immerse them in an inappropriate sexualized environment in order to, you know, that is what happens. And I'm just going to say, if your defense is the kid, the child wanted it, then you should probably be thrown into the sun to go have a little swim. This is ridiculous. Your defense on this should never be the child wanted it. Vanity Fair, what the heck are you doing? This comes off as an insane defense of behavior that is indefensible. Grooming behavior, when we're talking about in the context of sexually abusive behavior, and we don't know if that's where this was going, but all of these things, you know, if there was somebody who, if somebody came to me and said, my kid is going through these things, there's this person who's sending them um, underwear and porn and, you know, this kind of thing, my advice would be get your kid out right now. Uh, you don't know where it's going, but you don't want to find out what's at the end of that train ride. It's, you know... This is really concerning behavior and something that should, we shouldn't be writing lengthy apologies for. I can also say, just to be really frank and to put none too fine a point on it, if Colleen Bellinger was a guy and was doing this same stuff, we would have lost our collective minds by now going after her. And, you know, that isn't to say that it would be inappropriate to do so, we would be going, you know, nobody would be writing these puff pieces saying, oh, well, it's not so bad. This piece, quite frankly, reeks of PR agent. And PR agents contact news organizations and opinion organizations all the time to say, hey, could you write a friendly piece? Sometimes they even ghostwrite those. And I don't know if that's what happened here. But it certainly seems possible it would be an explanation for why this weird article exists. And if it's not the explanation, well, then that's worse for Vanity Fair, not better. Uh, quite frankly, what I think they should do is yank this one. Like, just replace it with a, we posted an article, we don't stand by it. it and instead, replace it with an apology to Adam McIntyre because... Comes off kind of hit PC on somebody who there seems to have been some offending against. You know, he seems to be the victim in this, not the aggressor. So maybe don't write a hit piece about him. Just a thought. Anyway, um, yeah, this story, the more I dig into it, the more I just kind of shake my head and wonder what's going on. Um, yeah, um, she's saying, hey, I don't deserve to be canceled. Well, nobody owes you an audience. Nobody owes you their eyeballs. And if people find your behavior to be reprehensible, they might vote with their feet and vote with their wallets and go elsewhere. So, yeah, um, that is that said, um, don't know for certain if she's committed any criminal offenses. There are some things here that certainly smell that way, but I haven't been able to dig into it 
a hundred percent on any of that, but, and you get weird questions of jurisdiction, especially when this spans across multiple countries that becomes its own headache. But the behavior here is certainly creepy and off-putting. We can go at least that far, right? Vanity Fair, can we at least agree that this is not okay? Please? Anyone? Yeah. Um, parents, if your kids start, you know, talking about how, oh yeah, there's this cool adult in their life who is joking about this stuff and shows them porn and stuff like that, get them out. <laughs> get them out right now. Um, you can't fix the things that are often after those steps. Anyway, um, those are my thoughts. I just kind of had to make this video because I read that article and it made me angry, like straight up angry. So yeah, um, please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more content, but um, I'm going to link the Vanity Fair article in the description below so that you can check it out. But um, maybe if you don't need to, don't because... They're probably also rage farming clicks here. If I don't, people are going to say, oh, you know, why didn't you link it? But I'm going to encourage you to just leave that link unclicked. Um, but uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Traveling Science Man, the CCFR, came Canada's National Firearms Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sights and Arms Limited and Jane Babe and Luxor. And at the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Kyle Fox, Here's a Coin Legal Witcher, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. I hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.